Every rebel launching an amphibious assault is gangsta until the Empire deploys what is essentially an AT-AT on skis. What's up, meta nerds? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the AQ-5 Wave Skimmer, also known as the Wave Walker. This weird vehicle is originally from Legends, but has actually made its way back into canon, funny enough, by accident. The AQ-5 is a large attack hydrofoil used by the Galactic Empire. It was developed later in the Imperial Era, and wouldn't see much combat until the Battle of Mon Calamari, almost a decade after the Battle of Yavin. The AQ-5 was produced by the Hydrosphere Corporation, an aquatic vehicle manufacturer who produced the majority of the Empire's underwater arsenal. In particular, the AQ-5 was developed by the Hydrosphere's design team, Beta, a notorious group of four engineers that were best known for the Sea Trooper armor and designing modified packages of other vehicles. Some of their packages included the Aquadon Combat Aquaspeeder, based on the T-47 Airspeeder, the CAVA-400, based on the CAVW-PX-10, and the formidable AT-AT Swimmer. As for its overall size, the AQ-5 was about 14 meters or 46 feet long, making it about three-fourths the length of the AT-AT, and it was likely around half the height of the walker, meaning if it ever showed up on Earth, it'd be about as tall as a three-story building, or about one-seventh the height above the waterline of the Oasis-class cruise ship. Its top speed was 160 km per hour, or about 100 miles per hour, a total of 100 km per hour faster than the AT-AT. Think about the fact that the AQ-5 had a similar armament, but could go 100 miles per hour faster is kind of terrifying, especially to anyone trying to fight these things in smaller watercraft. And although not for sale, if you knew the right people, you could buy one on the invisible market, a sort of super black market, at a cost of around 285,000 credits. For armament, the AQ-5 had two medium and two light blasters mounted right below the cockpit area. These guns did have some degree of motion, being able to swivel and not forward fix like the AT-AT. It was also armed with two concussion torpedo launchers, which, although we can't really see where they're fired from, they're most logically fired from the pontoons, as this would explain why these pontoons have these forward-facing holes. The AQ-5 had a crew of one pilot and two gunners, and we can presume that one would operate the guns while the other would fire the torpedoes. While the hull of the AQ-5 could actually carry a decent amount of cargo or troops, up to 28 troops could be transported in the hull, or up to a metric ton of cargo could be carried. To all you Dubak fans out there, in theory you could bring your war mount with you for when you hit the beaches. Its design consists of a large hull with two outward wings that extend down onto pontoons. It had two cockpits, one positioned above, and one directly in front of the nose. This upper cockpit is most likely where the pilot and one of the gunners would sit, while the lower hull cockpit is most likely for operating the torpedo launchers. The AQ-5's history begins around 2 ABY, where it was one of many vehicles produced by Hydrospear's design team, Beta. The first prototypes of the AQ-5s were a lot weaker than their production versions, only hitting a top speed of 90 km per hour, and not having any of the torpedoes or light laser cannons. We wouldn't hear much about its service before the Battle of Endor, but it would be seen at the Battle of Mon Calamari. In 10 ABY, the Reborn Emperor would send massive mobile factories, the World Devastators, to Mon Cala. There they would begin attacking the temporary capital of the New Republic, Dak. During the battle, the World Devastators would be ordered to begin collecting resources and attacking the major city, in an attempt to force the New Republic to surrender. The battle would be in the Emperor's favor until Luke, who had joined the Empire as Supreme Commander to bring it down from within, got access to the command codes to the Devastators, and then gave them to R2-D2. The little droids saved the galaxy again, and issued a shutdown on most of the Devastators, disabling their weapons, shields, and engines. Seeing the massive machines now weakened, the forces of the New Republic began attacking the dormant Devastators. Sea Commandos were deployed on Amphibions, a type of attack hovercraft, in an attempt to board these superweapons. The Imperial crew knew that the World Devastators were not going to last long if the enemies made it on board, so they formed a new plan. Before their shutdown, the Devastators had collected enough materials to begin producing new weapons. So the crew reactivated the factories on the Devastators in order to buy them time as they tried to get the machines back online. This is where we see the Imperials use the AQ-5. The World Devastators were able to churn out AQ-5s in great number in order to defend these mobile factories. Not expecting such a fight, the approaching Amphibions came under heavy fire. The AQ-5s were absolutely devastating, as the Sea Commando's crafts were only lightly armored, and had just a single anti-personnel laser cannon. The only major threat the Wave Skimmers faced would be from Starfighters, and even here we see the AQ-5 could absorb a good amount of fire before being destroyed. But despite their effectiveness, they were still unable to win the day for the Empire, as R2 initiated a virus in the World Devastators that ordered them to begin devouring each other. 
The pilots of the AQ-5s were forced to helplessly watch as these two super weapons turned each other into scrap. This would be the only major battle that the AQ-5 would be seen in, but it can be presumed that if ever the Empire came across an ocean planet in need of invasion, the AQ-5 would be there, riding atop the waves, guns a-blazing. A customized AQ-5 was used sometime during the Galactic Civil War by an Imperial noble named Reginald Hanniper Snopes III. This AQ-5 was used by Snops and a squad of sea troopers to explore a derelict alien wreck in the oceans of Spira. The main differences between this version and the standard AQ-5 was that it was actually used for touring operations and had additional, larger glass windows. Spyro was a major vacation planet that was under Imperial control, and nothing says Imperial vacation more than going on a joyride in a military hydrofoil. Despite being a touring vessel, it was still operated by the Imperials and was armed with two light blaster cannons, as civilians tend to get a little nervous when riding on top of pontoons full of torpedoes. The reason it still had these light blasters was most likely to ward off dangerous ocean life, as having your passengers eaten is a quick way to get bad reviews on tourism hollow sites. The AQ-5 wave skimmer has made an appearance in the novel Moving Target, A Princess Leia Adventure, and was first visually depicted in the story Leia and the Great Island Escape, although now they're just called wave skimmers. The wave skimmers in canon look a bit different from the way it was portrayed in Legends. Its central hull looks much shorter, and the gunner's position now has this viewing window. Its armament has also been severely decreased, as it now only has two blaster cannons. We see them used on the planet Cessid, where several of them attack Princess Leia and her rebel allies while she's working in Operation Yellow Moon. The wave skimmers would heavily damage Leia's boat, before she was rescued by the pirate submarine Dagadol. And so that's it for its history and breakdown, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. The AQ-5 Wave Skimmer first appeared in the Dark Empire comic series, and would later be seen in the Rogue Squadron video game in the final level. The touring version would appear in the Spyro Regatta, part of the Star Wars Adventure Journal. And the AQ-5 Wave Skimmer is only in canon completely by accident. The Wave Skimmer described in Moving Target of Princess Leia Adventure was meant to be based off a vehicle just called the Wave Skimmer, which was a single-person vehicle kind of like an underwater speeder bike. The author of Moving Target said, quote, Can't speak for Cecil, the co-author, but I was thinking of the West End Games jet ski things. The wave skimmers he was thinking of had their first appearance in the Star Wars role-playing game, created by West End Games. But when it came time to illustrate Leia in the Great Island Escape, the artist must have found the AQ-5 first whenever they searched for the wave skimmer. And a little side note, the planet that that tourist wave skimmer was used on, Spira, recently became canonized in the new novel Resistance Reborn. And the pirate submarine that saves Leia, the Dagadol, comes from the story of Jonah and the Whale. Dagadol is Hebrew for Great Fish. So that's it for the AQ-5. If you want to connect with us on social media, find ways that you can help support this channel without it costing you a thing, or check out our Patreon. Be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, don't get the cheaper Groupon for the weaponless wave skimmer, and the Force will be with you, always.